So in the NumPy lecture, we already talked about slicing, masking, fancy indexing, all that stuff. So for example, if we want to take those values of the second and fourth column that are divisible by three, we can do it like this. So we want a at uh, second and fourth column, uh, where a at the second and fourth column is divisible by three. And this gives us uh, those values. Okay, so we have similar means of assessing modifying values in pandas, series and data frames. Um, the patterns are very similar to those of NumPy, um, however, there are a few quirks. Okay, so let's start with a simple case of one dimensional series object and then move to the two dimensional data frame object. So, we already told you, series is basically like a one dimensional NumPy array or like a Python dictionary. You can see it both of these ways. And if we keep this overlapping analogies in mind, um, where we see how the indexing and selection works. So, seeing a series as a dictionary, well, we have now. For example, we can use just as in a dictionary, we have the contains method, which is the underlying method for the in operator, and this works. So b in data returns true. So um, we see here that the in operator for series works for the keys, just as it does in a dictionary. Um, we can, for example, well, we can even use the dot keys method, which is basically, it simply returns the index. Um, just as much we can use the dot values and the dot items. So when looking at the data dot items, or rather as a list, this is just the same as, as, as if I would call from a, NumPy, from a Python dictionary data dot items. So this behaves like a dictionary on purpose. And I can even assign, for example, to a previously not set key, I can assign a new value. And now, like just like a dictionary, it has um, also a value for the key E. But we can also see a series as a one-dimensional array because, um, well, it's um, underlyingly also a number array, so we can use slicing, masking, and fancy indexing. So for example, slicing on the explicit index. I want data at the position A to C. When we slice explicit index, like I said, the last one is included. We can slice by implicit integer index. So we see here that the last index is not included, so I get the zeroth and the first, but not the second one. I can go for um, masking. So this data bigger than three simply returns me some Boolean mask for all. So here we see what is the difference to NumPy when it keeps the um, index, right? So it tells me A, so data at the position A is not bigger than 0.3. However, at all other positions, it's bigger than 0.3. And on these um, mask um, series, where I can do again set operations. So I can, for example, do this. And well, this only gives me a mask and I can do masking. So I want data with these Boolean errors. So please give me not data day, but give me data B, give me data three, and don't give me data D and E. And so I get only B and C. This is masking. Fancy indexing, not so fancy, just giving a list of index of indices. And yes, we can do that. So if we have a list of indices, well, we get the values at these indices. However, what happens now if I have a series which has an explicit and an implicit index, which is both numbers. So my explicit index is one, two, three, four. My implicit index obviously is O, one, two, three. Now if we want data at the position one, two, three, well, apparently in slices, I use the implicit index. So um, if your series has an explicit integer index, an index operation such as data one, we use the explicit, while slicing, we use the implicit Python style index. This is a bit confusing, but I'm explaining all of that in a second, and there's a nicer way around this, and this is the dot log attribute. So first of all, what am I doing here? Explicit when indexing, implicit when slicing. This is how it is. However, the log attribute simply allows for indexing and slicing that always references the explicit index. And if you, when following me so far, were thinking, why the heck is it so complicated that sometimes the implicit and the explicit is used, this is bullshit. Yes, this is bullshit. Don't use it. Don't use get item on pandas series and data frames. Use data.log at the position something because this is explicit and this always uses the explicit index. If you want to use the implicit, you can use iLog. So data at the location one will now give me a um, well, because yes, this is right. And data at the location one, two, three 
will it give me, will it give me ABC? And we see that here, there's the, um, the last one is included. So if I use dot log, I always include the last one. Note, however, that log may or may not throw index errors when slicing. So if we have ABC as, uh, if we have one, two, th one, four, one, five, three, yeah, so indices, and we want to slice from A to Z, that will give me an index error, or rather a key error, I'm sorry. Um, if I want to get it at the position three, two, 10, this also doesn't work. However, if it were, uh, an index like this, so a monotonically increasing index, then I could slice like this. This is rather weird behavior, but it makes sense because this is monotonically increasing and thus another kind of index. All right, and just as we can explicitly use the uh, explicit index, we can explicitly use the implicit index using iLog. So data.iLog at the position one is B because zeroth element, first element is B. And if I'm slicing here, I'm slicing Python style. Please save yourself the pain and be always be explicit about what you do. So always use dot .log and .ilog and never use the get item on data itself. So never write data or df at the position something. Okay, this is what the Zen of Python says when it says explicit is better than implicit. To make sure that you understand it, so explicit is better than implicit means be explicit about what you do. You can use implicit. Don't always use the explicit one, but be explicit about if you use the explicit one or the implicit one. Okay. And then I have one addendum to indexing. And this is here um, that uh, the behavior. So pandas is not that new, but still rather new. And actually uh, in the last year, pandas uh, became version 1.0. So pandas is right now in version 1.0. And actually they are still older. Um, so on Stack Overflow, you're going to find help for older versions of NumPy, of Pandas, and it changed a bit. So, for example, using dot .log with the list of labels worked before if at least one of the keys was found. This behavior is deprecated now. So, before, in older versions of Pandas, I could run, uh, run this. So, I have fancy indexing, I have a list of indices here, and, well, one and two are in there, but three is not. And this would have worked before and simply give me NAN for this one. So it would return me um, two, three, NAN. This doesn't work in Pandas 1.0. Uh, so it changed from 0.25 or something. So instead you have to go for we index now, which, conf which conforms the series or data frame to a new index with optional filling logic. So now this is the behavior we had before um, with this. So generally, um, if you find help from Stack Overflow or something, make sure that it's for the correct version because Pandas changed the interface a bit when becoming version 1.0. Okay. So let's get to data selection and data frames. And we call that data frames act in many ways like a two-dimensional structured array and in other ways like a dictionary of series. Um, so let's create this population data frame again. And if we now index it, we're indexing the column. Okay, so if we simply use data.getItemArea, then we will get the column. And this makes sense because underlyingly, like I said, pandas is basically, uh, a pandas data frame is basically, um, it sees it as uh, the columns being serious. So this kind of makes sense that at the position area, there is a series. Okay. If we want to get a column, we could also dereference data.area. However, this leads to side effects. So if you, for example, had a column named um, values, then um, you couldn't quite get it with dereferencing because data.values already has a purpose. So I would rather use um, the square bracket access. And data.values, like I said, is an ND array. So with this picture in mind, um, Many array like operations can be done on the data frame itself. So for example, so pandas data frames are a strict superset of numpy arrays, of 2D numpy arrays. So, and on 2D numpy arrays, we can transpose. So just as much, we can transpose our pandas data frames. So this is really nice and a really quick way to make the rows out of the columns and vice versa. Um, for array style indexing, pandas again uses the log and ilog indexers mentioned earlier. And um, using the ilog indexer, we can 
um, index the underlying arrays if it's a simple NumPy array. Um, but the data frame index and column labels are maintained in the result. So I can index it like a number array. So this is how I index the underlying number array, and this is how I index it using pandas. So it works just as here, but I still have the column and the row labels. So again, it has basically the same interface as NumPy, and all NumPy functions are available, but it's more. So the functionality is a strict superset of NumPy. So always when it makes sense and you're not only working with numbers, you use pandas. Okay, so looking at data again, so I can use data at the location up to Illinois and up to population. So this works. So if I have two elements here, I first have the row and then I have the column. Um, just as much I can, for example, use fancy indexing here. So I provide a list for the columns and I want all the rows. So this is also how we, for example, would get a row. I could, so I told you getting a row is kind of hard, but we can simply get a data.location at the position California and please all um, the elements of so all columns. So, but we see here, um, because this is the way how we get um, the rows out of a number, uh, out of a pandas data frame, naturally it wants you to get the columns instead of the rows. But you can still do anything with the rows. You can loop over the rows, anything you want. I will get to that later. Okay, uh, we can simply add a new column. So for example, data at the position density is data at the position population divided by data at the position area. So we see these here are vectorized calculations. So it takes all the elements from population divides that by all the elements of area. And this is efficient because vectorized calculations are always efficient. So that's really nice. Um, and we can combine masking with fancy indexing. So here we are masking for the rows and we're using fancy indexing for the columns. So this also works. If you want to combine explicit and implicit indexing, you have to change them. So for example, if I want to get well data at the um, at what is this at the rows, right? At the rows one to four and at the columns population and density, I would do it like this. So I could um, obviously also, I don't know, select only certain columns here. So population is not the first column. So if I do it like this, well, there is no population here now, so I get an index error. But yeah, I can combine iLog and log by simply chaining them. Okay, and again, while indexing refers to columns, slicing refers to rows. Data at area gives me, no, not again, but this is new, right? So data at the position area, I give it a, an index refers to columns, data at, and then I give it a slice, refers to rows. <sighs> Isn't this annoying? Yes, it is. Use data.log. So be explicit about your indexing and save yourself from a lot of confusion. So if I tried to do this, this doesn't work, but data at the location would work like this. If you only want to get a single member, use at. So data.location is if you want more than one, and data.at is if you want precisely one. This is simply more efficient and thus faster, which this time it um, in Jupyter cell magic will tell us. So this is a tiny bit faster, but if you're doing it many, many times, it's a lot faster. Okay, because <laughs> um, I probably confused you, here is a comprehensive list of how you access the elements. So for data frames, if you have direct square bracket access, if you give it one argument and don't provide a slice but a single number, you get the column, so data at the position area. But a one argument, but this argument is a slice, you will get the row, and the slice top is included. And if you provided both arguments with the direct access, this doesn't work, because this is how you would work with multiple multi-indexing. I will get to multi-indexing in right after the chapter. Okay, dot lock, one argument single gets the row, one argument slice also gets the row, both arguments, either never mind if they're single or slice, gets row and column, but uh, wait, you have to specify what you are specifying is, it doesn't get it, what you have to specify is. So what you have to specify is the row and the column. So for example, data.location, Florida until a noise or area, or area until, and then area or area until population, whatever. And again, the slice top is always included. So we get a noise as well. And if we use iLog with one argument, which is a number, we have to provide the row. So what it is we're providing is the row. If we use a slice, what it is we're providing is again the row. And if we provide both arguments, never mind that there are slices or single numbers, is where we have to specify first the row and then the column. And the slice top for iLog is excluded because this is Python style. So 
This is confusing. These two are not. Use lock and I lock. All right. Um, uh, one part of indexing, so of getting at the index, is also re-indexing, re so changing the index of. So imagine we have this data frame and we want to change the name of this column, um, uh, rather with the name of these rows here. What we can do is we can data frame dot re-index with the new index. And now we have other indices here, so it will remove the ones which were here but are not in our new index. So what's not in here? Firefox. So it will remove Firefox. It will keep all the ones where the index is in both, which is here you see why we need set why the indices must know set operations. So Chrome is in both, so Chrome is kept. And for the new ones where there weren't values, it simply uses NAM. Okay, and we can do the same thing for the columns. So we keep HTTP status here and user agent where we didn't have that in our previous one. So uh, it's not a, num not a number, so a missing value. And we can simply rename indices using data frame rename, And then we have a mapper with simply a dictionary old keys to the so old names to new names and then on the axis where if we want to rename the columns x equals columns if we want to rename the index x is equals index now zero or one all right boolean indexing so imagine this here is our data frame so now we have um so we had this before but now we have a column uh, one two three one two three and if we want to get those values where so a data frame at the position the column A of we want to get those we got, want to get a mask a boolean mask where it holds that data frame at the position A so the column A of data frame is bigger than 0.5 and this gives us a boolean mask so we can do masking here just as we can in series so this gives me all the rows of the data frame where data frame at the position A is bigger than 0.5 um, there is an alternate syntax which is query so um, data frame dot query this is basically you can get a you can give it a string and you can use for example add variable name to include in there this is going to be evild and this is just an alternative syntax which you sometimes need and i just want to list it here then i have listed the is in method here so this here is an element wise method that basically asks for every single element of the series well is it in one or two Okay, so this is what we have to use, and we cannot use um, the normal Python in operator because this will throw an error. Value error, the truth value of a series is ambiguous. So why, this is actually an error you will see many times in pandas probably. And this is always when pandas tries to internally convert um, our series into a truth value. And this doesn't work with pandas because the truth value of a series is ambiguous. So why, so why does it do that? Well, Imagine, so if you basically have a pd.series12, now this is the same as what we had before, right? Just for another series. Now, if we want to check if this is the case, well, what you can imagine underlyingly, Python basically checks for this. So this is not how I think Python actually does it underlyingly, but you can imagine this is how it would do it, yeah? So we see equals so the series equals one or the series equals two. Now this again, the truth value of this is ambiguous. Why is that? So well, let's look at what it's doing here. And that is, it compares element-wise. So the equals equals operator compares element-wise in pandas. So it returns me a series where I checked every element if it is actually one. And the same for two. And now if I combine these with the or operator, What's happening is it's going to try to convert the left side to a truth value and it's try to con it tries to convert the right side to a truth value and then it combines these truth values using OR. And this doesn't work. How does it work? Well, with the bitwise operators, as we've already told you before. So this here would work. So neither the AND operator nor the OR operator nor NOT, for example, this is why you have to use the uh, tilde thingy. Um, I said the tilde thingy are bitwise. So um, that's why you have to use the dot is in function. So the in operator is also not bitwise, which is why you have to use the is in function method, which is why Pranus provides it. Okay, so um, yeah, as much for that. Now let's continue with it. So we are checking here 
So we're setting all the positions of our data frame where this mask applies. Um, what happened to our data frame? Ah, no. So now we're setting um, our data frame where this mask applies to np.nan. And now where well, all these rows are not .nan. And now there's the pandas method um, is an A, which for every single value checks if it's not a number just like um, there's a numpy. Now, for example, we can use this dot any. So it told us already here before, right? If we wanted to use uh, the in operator, it told us to use all or any, well, dot any simply returns true if any of the values in, in this case, the row is true. So for every row, it returns me, well, there, it doesn't even change a thing because I'm setting all the values here. So if I use all or any, it doesn't matter. And this simply returns me a, well, a boolean for if there are NANs in the row. And then, for example, for, well, I can uh, reverse that and simply, um, well, only take those elements where that is not the case. So in here, this basically drops all the rows where there is any NAN in the row. And of course, pandas being pandas, it also has a method for this. So this here is df.dropna how equals any is basically underlying the converter to this and this will drop all the rows where there is at least one NAN in there. Okay, then I have an exercise for you. Write a panda snippet to get the names and scores of the people where the number of attempts in the examination is greater than two as a dict. So this is the data frame we're getting and you're supposed to get those people um, where the number of attempts is greater than two and write the names and scores to a dictionary. Okay, I'm going to pause. All right, let's do this part by part. So let's first of all get df. So first of all, df at the position attempts is bigger than two, gives me this mask. And then I can get df at the position where this mask applies, which gives me the entire rows. Um, then I only want the columns uh, name and score. So I can simply um, go for fancy indexing. I can simply chain that. So this results in the data frame and I can simply use on the resulting data frame fancy indexing. So now I have the names and the scores. And then I wanted to make that a dictionary, right? So then I want to, uh, well, let's, let's extract the scores and now this here has well it's not indexed at this index so this is rather weird but i take it and let's run to dict so if i wanted well you probably expected something else you probably expected this to be indexed with the names so i can dot set index name and now I have the index here. And now if I get the, at the position score dot to dict, now I'm getting uh, like this. All right. Then let's get real quick to data assignment. I've showed you most of that already. Just a few caveats here. So imagine this here is our data frame and we can simply assign columns by saying, well, df at the column country equals USA. And it works like this. Um, df at the position at the column to cold equals df at the position temperature is smaller or equal than 18. So this here, so it's a vectorized operation. So for every element of the column temperatures in Celsius, uh, it checks this and this then basically, so we see that this here is a series and we can simply assign the series here as new column for our data frame. However, if I'm doing it like this, this works in place, right? I'm changing the original data frame. To assign to a new data frame, I simply use assign. So imagine I didn't destroy my data frame here. And now I can simply call df.assign and then temperature and Fahrenheit. And then I can use, for example, also number lambda function here. And now this is the result of this. However, um, df didn't change. So this returns something, df2 equals. Um, 
Yes, so I can use lambda functions in here, for example, in the assign. I can also use vectorized um, stuff. So this here, like, like I did here, um, basically is a vectorized operation on the series, and I can simply assign the series here, just like we did before. And I can also do multiple assignments seriously by providing it keywords here. So temp f and temp k, so Fahrenheit and Kelvin, are two different functions, and it works again. So we even see that we can use temperature and Fahrenheit already at this point because it first applies this and then applies this. And this doesn't change our original data frame, but creates a new one. Okay, to assign to rows, like I said, a few caveats. So um, I can set the, lo the data frame with location Berkeley temp Celsius to 26. This works. Um, I can change the data frame with the location Portland. So this year, um, will give me a series, right? And just as much I can write a series onto this. Yeah, this is a series. <laughs> um, and I can write a series onto this. And so I can overwrite, for example, the entire thing here. There's only one, one uh, column here, so only one series I have to overwrite. Um, I can, for example, using the dot .log, I can write keys for I can write new columns, so I can make a new Osnabrück column. And I could, for example, um, concatenate. So this is also how I can. I can concatenate two random arrows. Not actually random, they have to have the same columns, otherwise it doesn't make much sense. But for example, I can um, have the same here twice. And then I see again, I have two indices here, right? And if I have two indices, all the time when I'm, uh, oops, now I concatenated in twice. So weird. And now if I'm writing df the location Osnabrück temperature Celsius equals 25, I'm changing that for every single occurrence of Osnabrück here, right? And well, if I try to assign a series here to df at the location Osnabrück, this wouldn't work. Why wouldn't this work? Well, because now df.log at the position Osnabrück is not a series but a data frame, because I have now more than one dimension, because Osnabrück appears there more than once, and now I cannot assign a series to this. So be aware that there are a few caveats on assigning, because indices don't need to be unique. Okay, so how do I set it, for example, to the first um, um, element, so the first occurrence of Osnabrück, where, for example, I could ask, where is the df.index Osnabrück, and that's the case for, this fir for the second, the fifth, the eighth, and the eleventh index, and then I can well, get df.ilog at the first position. So I extract the two like this, and then I call df at the location where that is the case. And now I only have the first occurrence of that. And now I can, for example, write the series here. So now the first Osnabrück is going to be 99 degrees, and all the others are going to stay the same. It doesn't make much sense for this kind, as you see. Um, but generally, this is how you could, for example, write. So let me get to the last section of chapter 2 which is indexing. So pandas does provide objects that natively handle three and four dimensional data, however, you never use them. So if you want to use something which is like pandas, but generalized for higher dimensional arrays, use X array. This is really nice for that, but you hardly ever need that. Maybe for geodata, but not in pandas. But what you do in pandas is you can use hierarchical indexing. Um, so you can incorporate multiple index levels within a single index. So this is the same as if you would, in your Excel sheet, have two so you have rows and columns, and in the rows you have well, more captions. So for example, when we have this as our series, so now we have as indices for our series, we have tuples. So this is the first index, and this here is the second index, and so on and so on. We can just as well from this hierarchical index create a multi-index using pandas multi-index.from tuples. Now this here is a special type of pandas index. Now we see why it was called names before, because well, the index can be a multi-index, and then we have the hierarchy levels here. Okay, and now we can re-index our population series, which here is simply a one-dimensional index, which are tuples, using this multi-index, and now it looks really nice. So this is how you would, for example, write that in Excel sheet, right? California here, and here, then 2000, 2010, and so on, and so on. State here, and year here. And this is a multi-indexed 
uh, series. So we can get um, California at the so we can get our population uh, series at the position California and then 2000. And now we see here, uh, this already is a hint, um, for data frames this works as well, but now we see why in our list of how we index, both arguments didn't make much sense, because both arguments is how we simply use multi-indexing for the column. So if we have a data frame, this obviously works the same with the multi-indexing, and if we provide two arguments there, then we have well, an index for the first hierarchy level and for the second hierarchy level. Okay. And now, so uh, iLog still works as expected. So iLog at oops, the um, zeroth position simply gives this, and at the first position simply gives this. So iLog simply takes, doesn't care for the multi indexes here. Okay. And now you might have noticed that this here is basically two dimensional, right? So we could have easily stored the same data using a data frame with index and column labels. And Pandas knows that and is built with this equivalence in mind. And this is the unstack method. So the unstack method will simply convert a multiply index series into a conventionally indexed data frame. So pop the unstack we made as a data frame here, which contains the same thing as this here. However, we still have this weird where well, this here is the name of this index and this here is the name of the row index. But what we can do is we can wait, we set the names of the index, set them to none, and then we index. And now if we unstack it, it looks just the way we saw before. So this is simply the index as having names. I generally find the index names quite annoying data frames, which is why you often see me removing them. So what if I want to unstack and then transpose? Well, I can basically achieve the same thing by unstacking with level equals zero. Now, if I stack this again with the level equals one, which is the standard, I switch the indices here. So if you unstack and then stack using another level, um, you're going to switch the column in um, the, the, the hierarchy order in the indices. Okay, another way to rearrange hierarchical data is to turn the index labels into columns. And we can do this with reset index. So if we do this for a population, we see that we have an index California, an index of the state then the year and then the value. Now let's make that explicit by naming the indices so that they have good column names. And now if we reset index, um, this is gonna create a data frame um, where the indices are now columns and also this here is a column. And to give it a name where we can provide the name argument. So now what was an index before is now a column, index before a column, and now what was the value before is now under the name population here. Okay, so often when working with data in the real world, the raw input um, is, looks like we should build a multi-index from the values. And we can do this by basically the uh, reverse order. We can set index, you've seen that before, but if we set index and give it a list, then it's automatically gonna create a uh, multi-index. And because I really don't like the names of the indices here, I'm simply gonna rename them such that they're gone. And actually, like playing around with this is what I do often. So sometimes I also don't understand how a data frame actually looks under the hood. So I just play around with all of these arguments, with all of these method, methods here. Um, so here I'm unstacking such that I have where the population, I have the, um, the year under the population here. Now, if I look at the columns of this, now I see that the column is the hierarchical, uh, the columns now have a hierarchical index. And if I now, um, change the area. So if I now add the column area, we see that now this here is a hierarchical index. And so population is hierarchical and area would only has one empty sub index in the hierarchy. And now we see that the type of getting our data frame at the column ASDF is a series again. So we have this series here with 999 and if we get um, our new data frame at the position population we see where that this now is a data frame because like i said if we get it at the position population we still have this data frame so underlyingly there's a data frame inside this data frame so we have one um, more level basically so it's three dimensional and yeah like i said i often play around with setting the index and renaming the axis such that eventually it looks the way I want it to be. So here I want the state to be my index, so I set this to the state, and then I rename it so that I don't have this name here anymore. 
if I reset the index here, I make it look the way it looked before. Right. 